Hillary. If anybody's interested in getting a device, really they can, uh, laptop, can right? be, you know, reach out to Because I didn't have post the link on the picture. Like, I just updated uh, the link. On yeah, the I just downloaded it. So I know whatever he okay. said, he did it and I just downloaded it.
sorry for taking your time. So my name is Ruby um, Dameshi Brown from Ghana, and I'm the Senior Programs Officer at the Open Foundation West Africa. I'm here with my colleague, um, Eugene. Eugene Masiku, Communications Officer, Open Foundation West Africa. And some Kiwix ambassadors, we have Pearl. Pearl, you can introduce yourself. Um, I think Azelo and then Carol. Yeah. So today we're here to share with you um, how we've been going about the Kiwix for School project. Some of you may be curious how, why is it that we're interested in this project and what are we doing with it? So the, this project, um, you know, as Wikimedians, we've been contributing to a lot of projects that are online. And most of the time, they are very useful information that um, students can use. But then, because of internet challenges, they are not able to access this kind of content. So we're thinking, how can they access the content for their educational purposes? And so we came up with the Skills for Schools. And um, just to talk, th this presentation will share with you how we've been going about that project, just in case some of you want to um, establish similar projects in your community. Um, I think one of the things that have really inspired us to do this project also is because we're seeing that internet is a human right. And also um, the UN has proclaimed 28 September as um, the International Day for Universal Access to the information, I mean information online, but why are we not still able to access information in spite of all this like, legislation that has been established? And so we're also seeing that the internet penetration rate in Africa is kind of like still a challenge. Although we've reached about 43%, there's still a long way to go. But even with the progress that have been made, um, we also realized that there are a lot of challenges that still persist, and that has to do with high internet costs. Because in, in, in the places that we have internet, we've seen that internet costs is also a big challenge. And so <laughs> uh, another interesting challenge that we've seen in our part of the world is the fact that devices are expensive. Not every student has access to devices. Not every parent can afford devices for their kids. And so for most school students, they rely on the devices that they use in school and not at home. And another interesting thing is the digital device. If you come to the urban areas, you find um, students having access to devices than when you go to the rural areas. So there are a whole lot of challenges. And one interesting um, research that was done by Statistica um, some few years ago, somewhere in 2021, we realized how expensive internet data bundle is in Africa. And even for example, in the Central Africa Republic, um, internet cost one gigabyte. And all of us know how many gigabytes we need every month, okay? One gigabyte is equivalent to 24% of an average income of the, the, the people in that country. And this is not just the country, there are a lot of countries in Africa that you know, cannot match up with the cost of internet. And so they would rather not be online. And we're seeing, we're also seeing another research that is saying that we need about 428 million to solve our internet connectivity issues, billions. I don't know when that is gonna happen. So while we are not waiting for that, we realized that when the pandemic happened, um, we sort of like try to adjust to work on things um, online. And we realized that even in the Wikimedia movement, we saw a dramatic shift even in our community because people were not comfortable with online stuff. They always wanted in person, but it looks like now people actually prefer the online trainings. They like to attend events online than even in person. Okay. so. Um, even though COVID is not so, so much of a good thing, but it brought that kind of innovation and an adaptation into the new way of life. And let me go to the next slide. So what exactly is KWIX? A lot of people will be wondering what is KWIX? What is it about? So KWIX is a free open source offline web browser that brings internet connectivity to millions around the world. So 
um, it's a software sort of like if you download an app or something like that. So it allows you to read online content offline. So once you download, <laughs> we'll, we'll demonstrate it to you so that everybody can go back home knowing how to navigate the Kiwi software. So what that, what that means is that it allows you to browse online content offline, okay? So any kind of online content, whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's a um, website, whatever it is, you can turn it and use it offline, okay? So some of the content that we make available on KWIX, especially for students, are tech Ed, FET, Biography, Chemistry, FixX, English, Vocational, Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is so big, so we don't try to put everything on it, but we try to be selective. Like if you, if it's about medical stuff, then we're going from Wikimed, or if it's about bio, biology, we're going for biology. Okay, so we try to tailor it to um, specific content, depending on who is using it. So Kiwix, someone wonder who actually, what about Kiwix? Actually, we at Open Foundation is not the uh, one creating Kiwix, but there's an organization called Kiwix as well. So if you go online, you can be able to have, um, read more about them. It's also a nonprofit organization. Um, so talking about the Kiwix for School project, how we're going about it, um, this started as a volunteer activity, like random volunteer activity. And I think um, the first person who introduced KWIX in the African continent was Felix Nati. Um, that was way back in um, 2016. And we had other volunteers like um, Maxwell also doing volunteer activities with KWIX. But then we thought that this actually is a very good and useful thing. So why don't we turn it into a program, train people, more volunteers to be able to take KWIX to their schools. And so we looked at, we, we didn't just go and do it, but we tried to pilot it to understand how useful um, that is for schools before we, turn, we, we actually like go into pro making it a program. And we realized that even through KWIX, we are trying to even create awareness of Wikipedia because a lot of people still didn't know anything about Wikipedia. So through KWIX, we are, being, we are able to introduce students to Wikipedia and its open platform to sort of like create awareness, get them to thinking about it before they get to university. Because most of the people who are even at the university don't even know there's a community behind Wikipedia, even though we're using it. Okay, so um, this is a very great um, way. We also realized that Nobody, like actually most of the people don't know that there's something like that that exists that they could use in their schools. So, yeah. So how we have done it, we did it through um, a KWIX mini fund program. So what we do is that we leverage on volunteer capacity because of um, how we want to sustain the program. Um, the program, is modeled around volunteers. And so what we do is that we reach out to volunteers in our community who are interested to do in education programs because we realize that not everybody like is interested in the same projects in the Wikimedia movement. There are people who are also passionate about education projects and we want to take that uh, take that opportunity to schools in their communities. And so we reach out with um, a KWIX mini fund program where volunteers apply to be trained. So once they apply, we train them. We take them through how they can navigate the KWIX platform. We give them that training and what they can train the students when they get to the school. And we also support them with a mini fund that supports their transportation and basic feeding and all of that, because if you have to travel to your school and talk to teachers, try to install it, it's, I mean, volunteers time and all of that. So um, that's how we've modeled the program around capacity building, showing them how to go about it, empowering them, and they also taking it into the school. And through this, we have volunteers spread across Ghana. So we realized that by giving each volunteer 
um, the opportunity in different regions, we've been able to impact um, this project in, in the respective regions. Okay, so that nobody has to travel from the northern region to southern region to do care works. That's going to cost us a lot of money, but rather those in, in the communities were empowered to do that. So there are interesting things that we've learned and I want to share them with you. Um, for the past two years, and I think this is the third year, we're still trying to gather data for this year, but for 2021 and 2022, we've been able to train about 777 students um, on how to use KWIS because when they take KWIS to the schools, they need, the volunteers need to train them on how to navigate it on the computers in their school. So we've been able to train 777 um, students um, looking at the gender disparities, like <laughs> I think it's kind of close. And another thing that we also realized is the number of computers <laughs> is about 395 that we've installed so far. And um, we also tried to take some statistics about uh, whether they use the internet, whether they've heard about Wikipedia, whether they've heard about KWIX, and these are the statistics that you're seeing, those that said yes and those that said no, okay? Um, and we also seen a very sharp gap, a dramatic gap between the student population versus computer usage. We, rel we realized that, sorry, versus working computer, we realized that, and as much as we want to do this, there are not many devices to serve the students' population. There's still very few student, few devices, yet huge student population, and that's what we face almost almost all the places that we've been to. Okay, so this is also very um, a critical. And I think we also reached out to KOX um, to connect us with partners that donate computers. So these are some of the thing, ways that we want to solve this kind of problem. Like the organizations that donate laptops and all of that. I think these kind of partnerships are something that um, are really beneficial to solve some of these issues. So th this is the ratio I'm talking about. So you look at huge, so this is the student population and this is the number of computers that is serving the population. Okay, so there's that kind of um, huge gap. So let me go forward. So, There are other challenges that we're also um, encountering during this project. And apart from the unmatched student to computer ratios, we are also seeing um, localized content is also a problem because a lot of the contents that the students actually need, um, we have general contents that can complement their education, that can help them to do research, but students also need the, the, the kind of localized content that their teachers are teaching them. And so we're also seeing that gap. And I think um, Wikimedia, uh, we're also doing some project, the Wikidata for Education project, trying to model the Ghanaian curriculum on Wikidata. And we're hoping that some of these projects like this can help to solve those kind of um, challenges. Then some of the content are not supported. Um, so we would need to um, look at content that you can, there was one past question that we we're trying to turn into a SM file. The way that it was created, that website was created, it's not compatible for, um, and also you need to be careful with um, copyright because if the website is not so open and you can run into issues if that person gets to know that um, maybe you are using <laughs> that uh, website without permission or something like that. So you might want to also be careful um, with copyright. So beyond Ghana, this year we launched the Kiwis for School Africa Mentorship Program. Um, when we did our session in Wiki Naba last year, we realized that a lot of African communities saw the need for um, a program like this in their community. And so we thought that why don't we give opportunity to other African communities to also um, 
participate, build capacity. We get to know what it is and how to navigate it. And so we we launched the Kiwis for School Africa Mentorship Program, and um, we have, out of the 100 people that were enrolled on this program, we had 64 participants from 20 countries that have been trained and are Kiwis ambassadors, uh, trying to do some of the similar projects in their communities. So currently we are piloting the projects in South Sudan, Nigeria, DR Congo, Burundi, Tanzania. Um, yeah, we have Peggy who is here to do some particle demonstration for us as an ambassador because we want to, you know, show, <laughs> give the opportunity for ambassadors to show the world that they know how to do what they know how to do best. So um, there are lots of learnings. I think if you get access to the slide, you can be able to read some of the things that um, people have learned from the program and what you're saying about it. So how we went about the program, we adopted a self-paced um, platform. And the reason why we adopted that kind of hybrid model was because of different time zones. And as we hear, it's uh, it's about um, 4 p.m. And I think it's, it's like morning or something like that in Ghana. And so, I mean, we all have different time zones. We cannot force everyone to attend a live session. So we adopted that kind of path. And it was kind of helpful when we took the feedback. These are some of the feedback, 90%. So the self-paced learning platform as a very instrumental um, way of impacting and bringing them in the program. And this, the, the platform had videos. So it had the text and it also had videos to train people. So those of you are interested to explore that platform and give us your feedback uh, we'll be happy and also we're also learning that there's a learning platform also in wikimedia so we'll, we want to explore that as well for the next training to see how that can also be helpful for the wikimedia community so that everyone can also i mean take the, the course themselves and then see how they can um it can help them um yeah, so I don't want to go through the feedback, all this feedback, but I want to um, also give the opportunity to um, usually to talk to you about the book exchange board briefly, uh, and maybe some of you can get an idea of what it is. But in the meantime, Peggy, let's let's do the particles. Yeah. So thank you, Ruby. I think we should all clap for Ruby. She did a good job. <laughs> thank you. So Peggy would, um, I will just briefly talk about the book exchange booth and then Peggy will go straight into their practicals on how exactly we can install KWIX. So as an, an open organization, we realize that there's a huge um, gap with regards to reading in Ghana because um, there was the statistics that um, said that out of 10 children in Ghana, about only three people are actively reading. And we saw it as a, a challenge. So our co-founders, one of our co-founders um, traveled outside the country. He went to Czech Republic and he saw a booth. He came across a booth and he noticed that people were just standing by the booth and then opening books. He didn't, you know, understand why they were doing that. So he went to inquire. When he went there, he realized that people actually place books in the booth for free. And other people can also, you know, come and take the books just in case they need them. So we adopted that um, style and realize that uh, since we are trying to um, bridge the reading culture gap in Ghana, why not do something like this? So we had a structure in our office, a wooden structure, but we realized that it, it couldn't um, seize the theme we wanted. So we had to deploy the services of a carpenter. We gave him the design. He painted it um, beautifully to the color of pink. So we just created a poster called um, the Book Exchange Booth. On the right, you can see Donate Book. On the left, you can see um, t Pick a Book. So we, um, we pitched this idea to some educational institutions. So we got a partnership with a, a, a bookstore called the EPP Books. So they donated a book, um, some books to us. So with our first project, we, we use the books that um, EPP books donated to us. We also got a um, donation of books from Ara Ghana. Ara also gave us books that we could also um, put in the, in the booth. So we put the booth at the mall and we're, we're happy to partner with a children 
um, store at the mall, mainly because most of the books were uh, related to educational stuff. And you know, if you would want to um, build um, the foundation of a child or the, the educational foundation of a child, you might start to what's a book. So we realized that this partnership with the Ara shop was a perfect partnership for us. So we situated the booth at their, at their um, shop where we see a lot of kids just, you know, uh, patronizing the book. So this is just a brief, you know, um, intro about the book exchange. But if you want more information about that, you can contact any of us. Thank you so much. So we're just going to demonstrate to you briefly um, how you can as download Kerwix yourself and how you can turn an online content offline. So a brief demonstration and then, I mean, you don't necessarily need a Raspberry Pi to have Kerwix, but you can have Kerwix on your pen drive or on your computer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Pelagia from Tanzania. I'm a Kiwix ambassador from Tanzania. So I'll take you direct to how to download uh, Kiwix, how to have it either in your phone or your PC. For today, I'll do a demonstration uh, on how to have it on your PC. So first thing, you have to go to the website. You write, uh, just write kiwix.org, this one. Once you're in there, you have to go to download. Then before download, you have to check. Kiwix, it comes with that. It's a, it has two things. First, you have to download a reader. Then second, you have to download their content. So for the first, you have to go for a reader. You go here, reader. So if you want to, you have to select like a, which platform do you want to download? Do you have a phone or window or Mac? or Linux as an operating system, or browser, or Raspberry Pi. So for us today, I have a, my laptop is in a window format. Operating, my operating system is Windows. So if you want to know like a, where you want to, to, to download your, your QX, you have to check like your operating system of, machine, of your device. So I want to download for Windows. So you just select Window. Then after that, you have to check the processor like we say like a processor type we, uh, processor type if you want to know like uh, your pc or uh, processor type of your machine you have to go to this pc you right click it then properties this one here mine is 64 bit so you go direct for 64 bit just click 64 Then here you go, you just check, it's downloading. While it's downloading, you can find the file. I mean, the file is in zipped format. So you have to, once it's done, you have to unzip it. It is, it is zipped. So if it's a window uh, device, you need to have a WinZip, uh, WinZip. And for Mac, you just need to double click it and it will open. So once it's download, uh, sorry, once it's, download, it's downloading, you know, this is uh, it's just a reader. Then later on, we'll go to download uh, for the content. Kiwix just come with as a reader. Then later on, you need to download the uh, content to access it offline. So, yeah. Can I add something while it's downloading? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we'll go okay, through okay. it. Maybe I'm too early. Yeah, step by step. It's almost there. So we'll do that demonstration to see it on this. So while it's downloading, at the end, once it's done, you need to find a, like a destination of your folder. Some other things can go to download, uh, C drive. So for hours, once then we have to check like where's the downloaded content like a destination. So it's done. You click on the folder icon. 
you find our lighter it's in this uh, in, in C drive we call it C drive so you just it's also in download so as you see this file it's in it's zipped so you need to unzip it so if you want to unzip first you need to find a location to destination for your unzip the file so I, I need to create like a folder in the desktop I'll call it let's say Kiwix unzipped let's say after I'll go to my zip the file uh, my downloads let's say then I'll right click the zip the file then extract file you have to extract it then you find what the uh, destination like uh, I created a folder on the desktop so you find a destination I called it Kiwix and zip so you just select then open My file was in the desktop, so once it's done, you find like a, the file, the folder, it will be like unzipped. So you just open it. Sorry, just open it, and you have you have to find like a a Kiwix icon. We call it executable file. Once you open it, it's like you can open the uh, the tool software. So you just find the uh, Kiwix icon. Then you double click it. This is my previous work, so I have to remove the, the, the content. Yeah, once done, this is the Kiwix software. This is the reader. It's come with no content. So once it's done, you need to find a content to be there so that you access it offline with no internet later. So we are done with the reader. We go back for the content. Are we good? Yeah. So we go back to the content. Just go to the same website, kwix.org. Let me go back. Sorry. kwix.org. Then you go to downloads content we now go to content now you need to have like a, you need to uh, to access content which you want for instance you want to access content for wiki dictionary let's say wikipedia for example let's say wikipedia content yeah we have so many files for uh, like in general wikipedia we have more than 100 gb so when we start to download 100 gb to Huge, so we just find a, a small file. Like, let's say we go for um, dictionary. Let's say we go for weak dictionary. We find a small file, it's a GB. Okay, so we can find a, just a small, uh, small size file like this one. We go to download, then if you want to download just direct, you go to direct. It will download. Just a small file, so it won't take so long. So we are done. Here's the file. You find it in download. So once we're done with the content uh, downloading, you just go to the reader. Now we need to access content offline. So we go to the reader, Kiwix, then you, ju you just click to the, uh, this icon, then you go to your uh, content now. This one. Sorry. Have idea. So let me go back. So you just click the this icon from Kiwix Reader. Then you just you have to access the content which you want to access offline. We downloaded this file with dictionary. Uh, this one. So just click it and open. Here we are. 
Now, well, here we are offline. Oh, we just connected the uh, Wi-Fi, but we, you don't need internet to access this file. Now we, we are offline. We're not using internet to access the content. Yeah, there we are. So, okay. So, did she have a so um, there's also the question that um, he asked. How do you turn yeah. into Ziva? We're going to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yes. if you have an, 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 a link online, show us how to. Okay. How to, to, uh, to make a, a Zim file? You just go to, uh, like a site known as Zimit. Just write Zimit. Here we are. A Zimit. First, you have to copy a website which you want to, to, uh, to, to Zimit. As we later, we deal with a Khan Academy for students, let's say. Khan Academy, it has so many things for studies. So you just choose what you want to, to zoom it. So let's say we want to zoom this pre-grade academic kids. It's a learning site. So you just, you, it's, uh, it's upon you what you want to, to zoom. So let's say you want to zoom Khan Academy for kids. Just copy your, uh, your website, your site, I mean the site. You copy, then you go to zoom it. You paste that. Then you have to write your email so that once it's done, they, they will like, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Let's zoom it. So here, uh, like, uh, it depends on the size of the content. It may take some time to, like, to reply back the, like, uh, this is done. Uh, let me give a, as an example. We did this for Kanye Academy. Once they're done, they, you will get this kind of, uh, of uh, an email, let's say. Yes, yes, once it's done. I think, I think for merging, you can't merge them. But what you can do is that you can categorize them in your KWIX um, reader. Yeah, just to make it easier for the viewer. Yes. And note that so it has to be under open license because what? Yes. Mm -hmm. To avoid any, you know, issues. The, the, some of the content on KWX itself has been zimmed already. So what you need to do is just download it. So if they are useful for you, you can just download it. But then if there are websites that you think are also very useful but are not zipped already, then this is the producer. Zim it. Zim it. So that's why you request for offline downloads. Yeah. So it could be YouTube videos. It could be like anything that works yeah yeah your mic is off hello okay good um i said is it possible to to zoom uh just a course not all the can academic uh content uh, yes. i don't know is it possible yes. to do it yes so because if you look at the okay. um how she went about it you see can academy website itself can be zim the whole entire can academy but then um we don't i mean depending on the audience that you're serving a lot of it might not be useful so what she what we what she did was she selected the site so for instance math for preschool Ah, so the URL that allows you to access them is what she said. Okay, so then you don't ask, you don't have to download the entire Khan Academy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but as for example, on Wikipedia, can I select uh, the, some articles and uh, um, try to zoom all, just this article? Is it possible yes. to do it? It's very possible. So you go to the article and click that link for the particular article and it's going to give you the same file for that particular article and that's it so you can have selected articles for various use and also to note to to, to inform you that chemistry is not just for students or schools you can use it personally okay so it can be for personal use um it could be for community library a digital library just find any way that works for you 
It's My last question. You said uh, for the implementation of the project, the fresh growth, uh, you find some gaps, like uh, uh, gaps of uh, materials, like a PC, a laptop. Um, for this cohort, uh, what do you do to ensure that to close this gap uh, and ensure that uh, all this um, in a school for implementation, all the students will have access to the material and uh, to have access to key risks for their education. Thank you. I think, um, thank you so much. I think what we also seen regarding the device challenge, device gap, um, there are not many devices in the school, but we also seen that teachers also uh, really need the content to do their research and they use mobile phones. But the challenge with the way that we are implementing the project is that we use pen drives to install on each computer in the school. So we have to download it in each computer using a pen drive. And that also brings a limitation because if someone bought a, a, a phone, they wouldn't be able to access it. So one of the solutions that we're seeing for this kind of challenge is using a Raspberry Pi, which sort of like tethers like an internet, like the internet in a yeah. box method can be a solution to, or a complement like to the work that we're already doing. So with the Raspberry Pi, if you put it in the school, Anybody can just connect to it, and that solves the issue. Yeah, I think you have a last yeah. question. Uh, yeah, actually, we almost done time. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a quick question. Actually, he was asking that whether we can have a list of you know uh, Wikipedia articles which we can zoom it. Yeah. So I, I guess that the best uh, thing will be uh, just create a category, put all the articles in that, and then uh, zoom it. So yes. that's that. And it's a really very cool project and I'm uh, eager to work further off with yes. you. Yes, thank you. We're also happy to work with you since we're doing the same thing. Thank Sorry. You. I think he's the only one to say the last thing. Then. Okay. Just to add that, I think this is a good chance for us to like to make awareness of Wikipedia and everything which is going on in Wikipedia by being offline. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm sorry, we are much... No, no. I, I just wanted to add that what she just said, we that we normally have internet connectivity issue, this is a very great tool to use because with it, you don't need to bother yourself about internet. You don't even need to bother yourself about buying data. So just use the Kiwis app and you're good to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, thank you for attending the session. So currently this room is going to be used for Muslim prayer. So we will need you to uh, carry your conversation outside. Yeah, so those... That